Batteries are the fuel powering our electric bikes. And for this very reason, we must choose them with extreme care. So usually you would think that the bigger, the better. Obviously the bigger the battery, the more space you have and the more cells you can put into it. This is a cell, one of the many constituents of these batteries. Now all cells are not made equal, which means that these two that we manufacture for the Saron are the exact same size and dimension, the exact same number of cells in them, but some of them are optimized for capacity and some of those are optimized for power output. You see, lithium batteries don't all have the same exact chemistries and some chemistries optimize for capacity whereas some chemistries optimize for power output. And as with everything in life, it's quite difficult to get both at the same time. In reality, if this one can output 15 kilowatt and this one can output 20, but usually 15 is plenty already, which one is better? Because what happens when we try to draw more than the rate of power output. The cell heats up, and what's heat? In our case, it's just lost energy. We want the energy to be converted into mechanical energy, not heat. So here's the thing. We have our bike configured to 15 kilowatts, so both of them can deliver that power. Now, this one is in its comfort zone, absolutely. This one, getting closer to 15, is not in its comfort zone but it can do it so is this one better because it has higher capacity or is the other one better because i mean finger in the nose for 15 kilowatt in the end the only way to truly know which one is the best is to do a real world test so i'm gonna ride both of them one after the other on a 30 kilometers course and at the end of the ride We'll see which one has the higher voltage. That's it, let's ride. This is our riser, rather high speed course. It's 30 kilometers, but it also features some uh, quite sort of demanding uphills. So it's a really good test for these batteries. Riding that fast. Make the cells heat a bit, but that's actually what we want to test. So you can tell the battery has no problem even though it's the less powerful of the two the battery has no problem whatsoever delivering the power now the question is will it heat and lose a lot of its energy dissipate a lot into heat rather than driving the bike forward Oh, well, that's what we'll know at the end of this experiment. Careful, we the road. We now have slow technical downhill. And afterwards, we're gonna come back up. This will uh, be low speed, but torque demanding.
I can feel towards the end, high torque demanding, it's a lot of amps running into the motor so it creates heat and you're not going fast so there's no airflow uh, cooling the motor so I could feel the loss of power controller reducing the power to prevent the motor overheating don't want to throw something at these speeds these three that close again quite demanding I can assure you it's way more difficult than it looks than it looks which is kind of what we're looking for Woo! that's a really good thing to do these kind of tests when it's uh, warm outside because we are riding in conditions that are harsher on the cells obviously I mentioned that cells they receive some of their power into heat and at first it's lost energy but second if it gets too hot, it can be dangerous, obviously. That's why you have a BMS on the batteries. If it gets too hot, the BMS has several temperature sensors and it will cut off, but we don't want that. And if I were to test that in winter, there is obviously no chance that it would happen whereas today it's more than 30 degrees so if it doesn't happen today it probably won't ever happen there's one thing that people don't really take into account is that the state of charge of a battery has a huge influence on, it, on its behavior so people usually estimates like in our case let's say we have a 72 volt and people would count like okay this is a 72 volt if the battery can deliver 100 amps it means 7200 watts but at full charge the battery is 84 volts and it still will be delivering the amperage so at 84 it can handle more power now when it reaches the end of the charge curve or this charge curve if you will it cannot deliver that much power so you will want to make sure or at least you will want to know that Trying to pull 15 kilowatts from the charge battery is okay. But now if you try to pull the same power out of a, I don't know, 80% discharged battery, it has less volts, so it will need to pull more amps to compensate for that. And the BMS is likely to cut 
So if your controller doesn't take that into account, it will try to pull the full power and you might experience a cut off. Whereas if your controller is properly tuned, well, it will say, oh, all right, it's really discharged now. So I won't try to take more than, let's say, 10 kilowatts from this discharge battery. And you're not likely to experience a cutoff. Yeah, we almost had a truck. We'll have a look at the stats. If you wonder why I have the supermoto wheels, you won't see it very often on the bike. And this is for the next video, so I mean, stay tuned as usual. Now, the conclusion is very simple and the discharge curves speak for themselves. The high discharge cells are just that, high discharge cells. So at some point, you have to um, make a trade-off between high capacity and high discharge. This holds true for all the brands, Molly Cell, Samsung, Sony, whatever. So now, if you only need uh, up to 15 kilowatts, I mean, regarding our packs, our 72 packs are up to 15 kilowatts for the high capacity oriented ones. I think it's way enough uh, for enduro uh, riding. So if you absolutely need 20 kilowatt or more, you have no choice. High discharge, but at the expense of uh, capacity. 